This is Sam DeLuca. He has climbed Mount Everest, crossed the frozen wastelands of the Arctic, and now he faces his most dangerous challenge yet, the littoral zone. In this episode, he will show you how to survive. We're here in the littoral zone on Hampton Beach. This is a very rugged terrain filled with aquatic life which is now being harmed by humans. We're going to show you how to prevent this. Seaweed slippery coating makes it hard to track across. Shoes are wet, seaweed's very slippery. You've gotta be careful. Many barnacles up here in small tidal pools. The waves crash up, leaving these organisms a great home within the seaweed. Now these barnacles start off life as tiny lava floating all around this area. They attach onto the rocks. And this is where they live out most of their lives. Come take a closer look. As they inhabit under the seaweed, you can just see they're attached right to the rock there. Now these barnacles have a specific name. Look at the seagulls up there. Now these barnacles, when exposed to the air, it closes the opening up at the top here. It's called a trap door or operculum. <laughs> operculum. This is made of two limey plates which join up with other plates to protect the body, keeping this organism alive. Now if you come over here, we've got the periwinkle snails. They inhabit this turtle area. Search, there's a nice home for them right in this little tide pool. Can we get a shot on that? Now the periwinkle snail, slightly larger than the rough, has a smooth shell, ranging from white shades of black all the way to yellow, red and brown. It lives among the rocks of the middle shore, looking for bladder, air-filled bubbles on fawns. If you can see here, we've come ac across the common prawn, a minute organism in the littoral zone. Look at that. Now, the, some are more lively, such as this one that's scurrying across the sand, searching for shelter. They only come out during low tide. Now, another thing I would like to talk about is the seaweed. You can see it's everywhere. Seaweed is, <laughs> seaweed is home to many organisms, such as the barnacles, the mini crawlers, as we've seen over there. If you pan out, the seagulls are actually eating those organisms we were talking about earlier. Take a quick look. That's just magnificent. Back to the seaweed. There's many different layers of this seaweed, as you can see here. The seaweed is in many common household items, such as your shampoo, many different things. It's also an ingredient in some foods. It provides nutrition to little organisms, seagulls, even humans if you want to believe so. I'll give you a nice little demonstration of seaweed's nutrition. Mm, it's rather tasty. You know, most people don't believe seaweed is very tasty. It's actually not that bad. It's not salty or anything. That's a whole lot of shit about seaweed. <laughs> now if you come over here, we've got the periwinkle snails. They inhabit this turtle area. Search, there's a nice home for them right in this little tide pool. Can we get a shot on that? Now the periwinkle snail, slightly larger than the rough, has a smooth shell, ranging from white shades of black. We're up here in the stormy region of the littoral zone. As you can see, we're surrounded by rocks. Animals are being pulled in, pushed out by the tides here in the littoral zone. We must be very careful as the tides come in at great velocity. As you can see, there's a wave coming on shore now. Let's examine how it flashes up on the rocks. Closer. Oh, oh lively! You gotta be careful in these waves, they can pull babies right off the rocks out of your hands. As you can see, I just got smashed by a big wave. Barnacles on the rocks, seaweed making it slippery. Very hard to survive. 
survive out in these conditions. As you can see, we've got the waves coming offshore as the tide is coming in. The fall of stone is known for killing many people throughout the years. Let's observe. As you can see, the hierarchy of the food chain, the seagulls, are feasting on the seaweed as the tide has gone out, searching for little organisms they can find. Let's take a closer look as they scurry through the rubbish. Now, if you go real closely, they won't be able to detect us. Now, I'm a skilled seagull catcher. Let me show you. That right there, folks, is how you disturb a whole pack of seagulls. The rapid expansion of home building in this area has caused the littoral zone and tidal inhabitants to shrink greatly. As you can see, the home building causes all these rocks to build up. And there's lobster cages up there, which is more littering and pollutants into the area. As you can see, there's humans right over there. Now those bloody buggers are the ones that are causing all this mess in this area. That there's a hermit crab. We're gonna go in, grab it, and try to give you a closer look. Looking under, you can see the crab is enhoused by its shell. This is just beautiful magic on camera as it pops out of the shell. Let's see if we can get him to crawl in my hat. I hope he doesn't pinch me. This is just beauty on camera right now. Let's set him back down. We are in the middle of this tidal pool. I'm gonna to have to navigate out. Could be very tricky. Now, due to the cold temperatures on this day like today, hypothermia might be setting in. I may need to hold filming. I've spent yet another night here on the beach. We've came up upon something very unique here. Evidence of human impact is all over the littoral zone. Trampling of beaches, the rocks we've talked about in past film, and now you can see there's a golf ball. <coughs> if I can just get it out of here. The titleless golf ball. Now, over there there's also a bag of some just trash all over the littoral zone. We can't have this over here if we want life to continue in this area. Something needs to be done about these humans.